Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our vocabulary. Today we will have our vocabulary lesson number 103. These words are coming from this book that I'm holding in my hand, the RN pre entrance exam. And as I've explained already several times, in uh, it's beginning with day number 101, that these words, even though they appear in this exam, we're taking it out of this exam here, these are the same sort of words that, you, that one is likely to encounter in any of these tests GRE, GMAT, SAT, SAT, TS, whatever it is that you're preparing for, uh, you will find that the words that we're going to learn in these videos are going to be equally helpful to you. On that note, let's begin. Yesterday, on day number 102, we left off at uh, question number 7, we did not finish it, and I told you that there is one word in question number 7, D, that we need to learn, and I'll say choice D in question number 7. And the word was, render it. It's a word, when, a, uh, Rate. What does it mean to venerate? It's a verb as we, as we said. Venerate means to treat something or someone. To treat something or someone. It could be it could be something, it could be a person to treat something or someone with a with a great deal of great deal of respect. And reverence due to its old age. That's the nuance of it. We, we respect something for someone uh, because of their old age. It could be a building. It could be anything. It could be it could be any kind of uh, uh, structure. If it's very old, we say that it's venerated. For example, you might say that I cannot believe that the town is talking about tearing down that venerable library. The library is venerable because it's been around in the town for almost 200 years. I cannot believe they can, they're talking about tearing down that venerable library, that, that venerable building. Venerable would be the adjective. When, or, 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 adjective, which simply means deserving of respect due to its old age. Venerability would be the noun. Venerability would be the noun. Let's learn this word, reverence, shall we? The word reverence that we see here, the word reverence that we see here comes from the word revere. Revere. Again, it's a word. What does it mean to revere? To revere, again, it means to respect someone or something very highly. To respect someone or something very highly to to treat to treat something something as sacred to treat something as sacred if you treat if you think something is sacred therefore it deserves respect it is to be revered to treat something as sacred or Sacrosanct. To treat as holy. To treat as holy. Let's put down the pronunciation of this word sacrosanct. Sac. Pro. Sanct. It's an adjective. 
if you're treating something as sacrosanct, you're treating it as holy, as something to be revered. To treat something as sacrosanct means to treat something as sacred or holy. These all the meanings of revered. Revered means to treat something or someone with, with a great deal of respect, usually because it is sacred. Usually because it is sacred. It's sacrosanct. It is to be treated as holy. It is to be it is to be consecrated. It is to be consecrate. Con C create. Consecrate means to treat something as holy, to treat something as sacred, to treat something as sacrosanct. They are all synonyms. Do you know the antonym of consecrate? Antonym of consecrate would be antonym would be desecrate. Des be create. Desecrate, which means to show disrespect. To something that is holy or sacred. Desecrate. I'm not going to write everything down. It means to show short, but to show, to show disrespect to something that is sacred or holy. Something that is to be revered, and if you show disrespect to it, you are desecrating it. One talks about the noun, of course, would be desecration. Consecration, desecration, and one talks about desecration uh, of flag. To desecrate the fla flag, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, means to show disrespect to it, to treat it in a manner that is not proper. And the word and the noun would be desecration, which means disrespect. Desecrate, consecrate. One more time, let's summarize. Revere means to treat something as holy or sacred or sacrosanct. It means to consecrate something. Antonym would be to desecrate. Let's move on, shall we? That was number seven. Let's move on to question number eight. Let's move on to question number eight. Question number eight tells us. By the way, these were the two words that we came across in yesterday's video, day number 102, feign and inordinate, and I told you that we did learn these words before. Feign is something we learned on day number 71. Feign means to pretend. So if you feign ignorance, you're pretending not to know something. If you feign surprise, you're pretending to be surprised. Inordinate means excessive or unreasonable. So if, so, if you're doing something and it's taking too much time, if you're solving a problem and you're taking too long, one might say, it is taking you inordinate amount of time. It's taking you excessive amount of time. It is taking you unreasonable amount of time. It shouldn't take this long. Let's move on. Question number eight. It says, he thought, he thought, the job that was given to him was was low and degrading. That's what the question says. He thought the job was low and degrading. And then they go on to say he thought he thought it was blank. And our job was to pick one answer choice among the four that were given there. And the correct answer here, question number eight, other than the correct answer, the, all the other three answer choices are quite straightforward. Well, not quite, but let's first learn, let's first learn the, the word in the correct answer. He thought it was, the job he thought was menial. Me, ni, Oh, menial, which means a job of very low status. 
a job of very low status. Literally, literally, menial means something that is suitable for something that is suitable for a servant. Menial job is something that you will give to your servant. Job that is regarded as a job that is regarded as servile. Let's put it here. Servile. What does it mean, servile? Well, from the context here, it's very clear what it means. Servile means to behave like a servant, to behave like a slave or servant. To behave like a servant or slave. It means to be, to be submissive. If you are very submissive, you are being servile. Servility would be the noun. So a menial job is one that is considered suitable for servant. It requires servility. A job that is of very low status. So a job that is of very low status. Do not confuse, let's see if we're done with the sentence, do not confuse the word menial, the word menial that we just learned versus manual. A manual job and a menial job are two different things. What is a job? What is a manual job? What does it mean when you describe something as a manual job? Let's learn it. Let's learn it, shall we? We're done with all of this thing. We're going to erase this thing. The word was menial. Man, you, man, you, oh. Manual job is a job. that is done, that is done by hands. A job that requires, that requires a great deal of physical effort. A great deal of physical effort, a job that requires a great deal of physical effort. There are some jobs such as being a plumber, being a construction worker, being a cab driver, uh, being a carpenter. These are all manual jobs, not menial job, manual job. On the other hand, there are some jobs where, of course, you have to do physical work, a little bit of physical work in every job, but then there are jobs such as computer programmer or a musician or a teacher or a professor or a dentist or a lawyer. Do not, they don't, these kind of jobs do not require a great deal of physical effort. They do require effort, obviously, but not a great deal of physical effort. Being a construction worker or a plumber or electrician requires a great deal of physical effort as well. And those jobs are called manual jobs. Not to be confused with menial job. Menial job, manual job. Menial means something that you consider below your status something of low status, something that, uh, that is suitable for a servant. Let, that's what it means literally. Let's move on. So, so that was question number eight. Now I'm, uh, we will go through a couple of words in the answer choices which we need to learn. And the first one is... So this is answer choice C and the word is... Contempt. What does it mean to have to have contempt? Contempt. Contempt is a noun. To have a contempt means to have extreme dislike. To have extreme dislike 
or hostility towards someone. If you have a great deal of if you have a great deal of dislike or hostility towards someone, you have contempt for that person. Now I realize that I started out by telling you that contempt is a noun and then I go on by telling you to have which sounds like the verb. It's okay, it's all right to be to be a little little sloppy like that as long as you understand it, as long as it makes it easier for us to understand the meaning. Do you understand? A contempt contempt is extreme dislike. It's an extreme dislike or extreme hostility towards someone. To despise someone. If someone says, I despise you, I despise you, that means I have contempt for you. To consider someone, to consider, to consider someone, to consider someone utterly and thoroughly vile. So that's one meaning of the word. That's one meaning of the word. Another way, another, another context, another context in which you will see this word, this expression to have contempt, means to to show open, to show open and open disrespect, to show open disrespect slash willful, it has to be willful disobedience of the authority of a court. And then the phrase that we use is in which case you will be held for contempt of court. That's the charge you'll be you will face contempt of course will be held in contempt because you show open disrespect and willful disobedience. As I said it has to be willful if the court tells you to do something and you are unable to do that because you fell sick or you were in an accident you couldn't perform your duty that the court told you that's different. But if you if you disobey and show willful disrespect and willful disobedience to the court then the charge that you will face is contempt of course because you show open disrespect willful disobedience. So that's how it's used. Contempt of court and contempt in the general context simply means to have extreme dislike or hostility towards someone. In this case it is the court. It is the legal authority. Let's move on. The very last word we have in question number 8 is the very last word we have is Nominal. What does nominal mean? It's an adjective. Nom o no. Nominal is an adjective which means small, trivial, in name only, in name only. Trifling. Trifling. I don't know if we ever learned the word trifling. I believe we did. I can look it up very quickly because there aren't too many words beginning with letter T. Just give me one second, I'm looking. It looks like we never learned the word trifling. To trifle with something is to treat something as insignificant, unimportant, of very little value. Some, and it also can be used metaphorically. If someone tells you, don't trifle with my feelings, don't trifle with my emotions, that means don't treat my emotions, my feelings, with very little, uh, with very little uh, dis very regard, uh, with very little importance. Assign some importance to how I feel, how I'm telling you uh, my emotions are. Don't trifle with them, don't toy with them, don't disregard them as unimportant or rather, don't regard them as unimportant. Do you understand? Anyway, that's what is trifling. The word is nominal. 
The word nominal also has one more meaning in economics, not in English language, but, but in economics the word nominal, so the, this is the first meaning. In second meaning, I don't know if I, if I really want to go there, in economics when we talk about, talk about something being nominal, it simply means it is not adjusted, not adjusted for inflation. Something that is not adjusted for inflation, we say it is a nominal amount, it is a dollar. But here, when we talk about nominal dollar, nominal amount, nominal amount means small amount, trivial amount, in name only. Last week I stayed at my at my brother's place, or well, last couple of months I stayed at my brother's place, and he charged me nominal amount of rent, nominal rent, just in name only, just a few dollars, just so just so I didn't feel like I was just staying there free of charge. So he charged me a little bit amount. He charged me nominal amount, in name only, just so we can say that I paid something. It wasn't significant. It was just to fulfill the formality. But here, nominal in economics means it's not adjusted for inflation. We won't go there. I'm not sure if I want to go there. Say for example, let's say for example, here's here's my here's let's say in 1970, in 1970, my yearly salary was two thousand dollars. Today, today my yearly salary is eighteen thousand dollars. These are called nominal dollars. These are nominal dollars because these are not adjusted for inflation. I need room, so I'm gonna I'm gonna erase all of these things since since I. Since I went there, now I have to finish it. Now we have to finish it. These are nominal dollars because they are not adjusted for inflation. No. Once you adjust this figure for inflation, either today's figure in 1970s prices or 1970s figures in today's prices, one of, the, one of them has to be adjusted to the other period, the prices that prevail today. Either we have to convert this, this dollar amount by using the prices that prevail today, or we have to convert today's salary by by using the prices that prevailed in 1970, one or the other. We have to have a point of reference, a reference uh, time period. And once we do that, it is what is what the economists will call real dollars, nominal dollars and real dollars. So for example, if I tell you uh, prices, prices are prices are 10 times today compared to compared to what they used to be in 1972. I'm, I'm just making it up. Not 1970, rather 1970. But if the prices are 10 times today, then this $2,000 1970, the real dollar for 1970, real dollar for 1970 would be 10 times that amount. In other words, if the prices today are 10 times what they were in 1970, then if I was earning $2,000 in 1970, then today, I should be earning twenty thousand dollars in, in order to just stay where I was. Forget about making any progress. So on the surface, it looks like I'm making nine times the amount, but the prices are ten times as high. So the real, in terms of real dollar, I'm actually making two thousand dollars less. This is called the real dollar. Unadjusted figure is called the nominal dollar. Anyway, that's it. We're not here to learn economics. I don't know why I went there. That's all I have for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. I know.